Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Betsy Parkinson and I'm Assistant Professor of Chemistry and Medicinal Chemistry at Purdue University. And today I'm excited to talk to you some about the lab that you'll be doing from microbes to medicine. So traditionally when you think of bacteria, you probably think of illness and disease. And you're completely correct about that. Bacteria cause a variety of horrific diseases. Especially now, there are many bacteria that are becoming resistant to a lot of our traditionally used antibiotics, and we are in desperate need of novel antibiotics. But today, you might be able to actually help us find a new antibiotic that could help with this. So one of the things that we really focus on is that not all bacteria are bad. Yes, there are bacteria that cause disease, but they're also, bacteria are also responsible for producing many of our clinically used antibiotics, anti-cancer agents, and antifungals. And this might seem really counterintuitive. Why would bacteria want to make antibiotics? It doesn't make sense. However, we have to take a step back and look at it from the bacteria's perspective. Many bacteria live in the soil, and so the soil is a very complex ecosystem. There are lots of other bacteria, fungi living there that they have to compete with for nutrients. However, many bacteria cannot move. They can't run away like you or I can or go to a new place to find that food. Instead, the way that they compete for their food is actually through chemical warfare. And so they produce antibiotics and antifungals in order to kill off their competitors and to have access to their food. So how did we actually discover this? This is a really interesting discovery. Originally, Alexander Fleming is a British scientist and he was studying Staphylococcus aureus. So Staphylococcus aureus is the bacteria that commonly causes MRSA infections. So infections that oftentimes you see on your skin that maybe athletes have experienced. So Alexander Fleming has struck out the Staphylococcus aureus onto a Petri dish. He'd left it on his desk and went home for the weekend. When he came back on Monday, he found that there was another microorganism growing on the plate. Now at this point, most scientists would have looked at the plate, said it was a failed experiment, and threw it away. However, Alexander Fleming didn't. He took a closer look. And what he found was this microorganism is actually inhibiting the growth of Staph aureus. So there was a ring around the penicillium where the staph couldn't grow. We call this a zone of inhibition, and this gave Alexander Fleming a hint that likely it was producing something capable of killing Staph aureus. So this observation was critical for the discovery of the very well used antibiotic penicillin. And Alexander Fleming actually credits his ability to make this discovery to his upbringing. Alexander Fleming actually grew up on a small farm in Scotland and until he was about 13 went to school in a single room schoolhouse. He actually says that he learned many of his observational skills while outside either working on the farm or playing in the fields and that that observational skill was why he was able to make this discovery. So obviously Alexander Fleming is not the only person who allowed penicillin to become a drug. He was the initial discoverer, but a huge team of researchers actually was involved in taking it from that initial discovery to a clinically used drug. One example of this is a woman named Mary. Mary actually lived in Illinois and worked in Peoria, and she was responsible for finding a new strain of this microorganism that produced even more penicillin, so they were able to get higher amounts in order to actually use this as a drug. This was incredibly important because at the time we were actually fighting in World War II and hundreds of thousands of soldiers were dying on the battlefield from the infections that they were getting in their wounds. And so it is thought that this is one of the things that was critical to us being able to win World War II. 
So this is the first example of kind of an antibiotic coming from a microorganism, but it's definitely not the last. And so a few years later, Dr. Waxman began studying soil-dwelling bacteria, specifically a type called Streptomyces. So Streptomyces are a very common soil bacteria, and what Dr. Waxman found is that they were very easy to isolate. And the main reason for this was because they actually formed spores. So spores are very, very sturdy and are not easy to kind of kill. Whereas you could kill off all the other bacteria that don't form spores and get Streptomyces all by themselves. So this is important to get to the Streptomyces, but what did we actually find from them? So Dr. Waxman actually discovered the antibiotic streptomycin. Streptomycin is an incredibly important drug for the treatment of tuberculosis. Another kind of fun fact about streptomyces is they also make some other very interesting molecules. If you've ever stepped outside after it rains and you smell that really good dirt smell, that's actually not dirt. That's actually a small molecule called geosmin that is produced by streptomyces. So streptomyces give us fantastic antibiotics to treat diseases, but they also give us pleasure every day just from the smell of dirt. And so in today's lab, you're gonna be collecting your own dirt from your own backyard and isolating your streptomyces and studying its potential to make an antibiotic by pitting it in chemical warfare against your neighbor, your friend's bacteria. So have fun and good luck.